From the ringing plains of dusty Troy, through the desperate days of the Roman Empire, to the ugly wars of the 20th century, the history of humanity is a tale of sound and fury as warring parties and would-be warriors try to overcome their adversaries and assert their superiority. The Great Game, as Kipling called it, is a record of atrocities and bloodshed, but also of acts of valour, deeds of honour, with a spirit of heroism that is also a reflection of the ethic of fair play. Hence the eternal attraction of Camelot, and the testing of chivalric values in joust or tournament. The ultimate prize being the Holy Grail. Though many knights set off to find it, the Grail can be achieved only by the pure in heart, and the quest of others to attain it too often ends in frustration or a degenerate babble. Bridge is our great game, a game of skill and valor with tournaments and tussles and a game that should reflect the chivalric values of fair play and ethical behavior. Too often, alas, the reality is otherwise. Let us consider the modern day scene, with two hands to be played between two pairs, the young and very nice, but very inexperienced, Mr. and Miss White, Honey and Nick, and their opponents, Mr. and Mrs. Black, George and Martha, who are, let us say, less young, more experienced, and not quite so nice. Oh, for Christ's sake, George, have you not heard of soup preference before? Look, dear, if you want to believe soup preference, how the hell do I expect the Marina to believe seven as a well, space switch? Look, it's serious hell wasn't asking for a club. Jesus, George, sometimes I really despair of you. Two big fat bottoms against them! If you want to overbid like that on the first board, fucking learn how to play the cards better. We, we play alcohol with weak twos. One board at a time, please. Jesus. Now where's the bidding pad? What are you doing these things upside down all the time for? Now people see the contract you, but no one's like, buddy, I might even be up the same contract as you, that would be a disaster. Oh, grow up, George, look, we're running late. Whose bid is it? We, we play alcohol with weak twos. North has a natural bid of one no trump. East-West should pass throughout while South's problem is that she wants to play in diamonds but isn't quite sure how to get there. George, should he find himself on lead against any contract, has a natural lead of the Queen of Clubs. However, a heart lead against any contract wins an extra trick for the defense because South's losing heart can no longer be thrown on the ace of clubs. Hence, the normal result should be three diamonds making for plus 110, except on a heart lead when it should be one down for minus 100. Sure. Nick bids one no trump. Martha passes. Honey bids two diamonds, which Nick circles, while Honey looks alarmed. Noticing this, George pulls a face, but passes. Nick bids two hearts, saying transfer, at which Honey looks even more worried. Martha pauses, shrugs, then passes. And Honey rebids three diamonds with a dot after the D. After which she folds up her cards. George passes, Nick passes, and Martha again pauses. Are those hearts real? I think she has diamonds. Martha passes. George, on lead, pretends to think for a while, then plays the seven of hearts. Nick puts down the dummy. Ice, please. Honey wins the ace of hearts. Honey then plays the Jack of Diamonds, losing to the King of Diamonds.
George continues the four of hearts, which Martha wins with the ten of hearts. Honey roughs the king of hearts continuation, George playing his last heart. She cashes the king of clubs, all following, then leads a spade towards dummy, which George wins with the king of spades, Martha pointedly playing the nine of spades. Oblivious to all this, George continues with the queen of clubs, which Honey wins in dummy with the ace of clubs. Martha pointedly playing the two of clubs. Honey now leads the seven of diamonds, looks confused when Martha shows out, but plays the ace of diamonds. Then another diamond losing to the queen of diamonds. George continues with the seven of spades, which Martha wins with the ace of spades. Martha now plays the queen of hearts, which Honey roughs. At which point she hesitates. Heart, please. Ice. Small diamond. Oh, look, come on, we don't have all day. We've still got another board to play. One down. One down. A hundred. Complete top. Good leap, partner. Thank you. What does Elizabeth Barrett Browning say to her partner? How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. Please pause the video at this point and make a list of the ethical violations that you've noticed. How many did you note? The typical play of a hand by four tolerably good players usually reflects about 20 errors of commission and omission. Here there have been this number of ethical improprieties alone. Moreover, the atmosphere of aggression and intimidation has rendered the encounter most unpleasant. But there is another board to play and yet greater larceny to unfold. There is an obvious three no trump for North South here, but one problem is the club suit. The other is the queen of diamonds, because whatever the lead, three diamond tricks are needed to bring home the contract, and there is a two-way finesse. A diamond lead sorts it immediately, but a major suit lead and a spade continuation puts a lot of pressure on Martha, who has to find some discards. Even if a club is led and four clubs are cashed, Declarer, by playing the majors before the diamonds, will probably find the Queen of Diamonds. But that's not how it went. 
After sorting their cards, Martha and George move forward simultaneously, George making a pass, but Martha writing one and then the start of an H, obviously, an incomplete on. one heart it's open. My, it's my bid. No, your bid first last time, it should be me. Um, oh, for Christ's sake, the board's upside down. It's your fault. Um, You're so the responsible for the boards. How the hell are we supposed to? Just play it like this, no harm done, it's my bid. He passes. Nick bids one club, which Honey fails to alert. Martha now passes. Honey bids one diamond. Nick, one heart. And Honey jumps to three no trumps. George and Nick pass, and George looks at his cards, starting to pick one out, but Martha has yet to bid. What's one club? We're playing week two. Look, forget about your week two, so I want to know about the one club. Can't be short? Then why didn't you learn it? I don't think it's your two. Look, I haven't passed yet. I'm perfectly entitled to ask. Your lead partner? George fiddles for a few moments, then comes out with the nine of clubs. Nick looks as if he might say something as he puts down his dummy, but doesn't. Honey fails to react. Thank you, dear. Good luck. Martha catches the first four Sorry. club tricks. Honey throwing dummies small hearts. Martha then switches to the Queen of Hearts, which Honey wins in Dummy. Honey now plays the Jack of Diamonds, and Martha hesitates noticeably, while George detaches a card from his hand as if to play it. Small card. Honey plays small, and George replaces the detached card with the Queen of Diamonds. George switches to a spade, and Honey takes the rest of the tricks in silence. She sits there unhappily for a moment. we've got company. Chalk it up. Two killer leads in a row. The age of miracles is not over yet. That's not fair. You hesitated. Are you accusing me of cheating? I should call the director. I played in tempo. It would be wrong for me to play any faster. Come on, George. Let's get out of here. At least we have a couple of good ones. A few more like that, we'll be right back into it. Did you get that deja vu feeling? Or is it a case of fewer transgressions, but more grotesque? Again, pause the video in a moment and comment on the ethical violations. If possible, form small groups to discuss it. Take the general rudeness as given, and likewise the gloating, but comment on 1. Martha's bidding out of turn. 2. Honey's failure to alert. 3. Martha's right to ask about the one club bid. And four, the partnership understanding that George and Martha display when Honey plays the Jack of Diamonds. And finally, five, you might consider what Nick and Honey should have done. Sometimes it just takes some time For the penny to drop Sometimes it just takes some time For the penny to drop the penny to drop the Rivers flow down to the sea But the sea is never full 
must be some kind of miracle. Oh, that's how it seems. Sun rises in the east, goes down in the west. Tomorrow it comes back again. Well, sometimes it just takes some time. Sometimes it just takes some time for the penny to drop, the penny to drop. There's no peace in getting high, no lasting joy in fortune or fame. Though we'd all like to try anyway. Well, the tournament is over, and its magic is no more. But it's been a day when goodness, right, and justice have prevailed, as in the ordained order of things in the Arthurian world, and on the Green Bay's table. The unworthy losers homeward wend their weary way, perhaps never to return. Leaving the field of battle, the triumph and the glory, to the valorous, the brave, the honourable, and pure of heart. That's all, folks. Waiting can make the heart run dry. It's so easy to get caught in time. Sometimes you need to fly the big skies Make me one promise, don't leave it too late Make me one promise, don't leave it too late Make me one promise, don't leave it too late Till we Don't leave it too late Make me one promise Don't leave it too late Till 